Mitchell Agude, he's got mm-hmm. a leg issue going on. Mitchell's uh, day-to-day, we'll see what he's doing. He's, he went through most of practice yesterday, so. Okay, was that something he did in practice? Just a little uh, tweak, a little tweak of his leg or no, something? No, I did. Okay, so he's not out for necessarily nope. for Stanford. What Nobody's about, out. All right, uh, nobody. Nobody's uh, out. Martin Andrus has also been working off to the side. We haven't seen him in a game yet. What's yeah. his status? He's right now, he's working back to get uh, fully healthy and we expect to see him soon. What about uh, Otito and Quentin Lake? Same thing, practice yesterday and we'll see how they go the rest of the week. Okay. How, uh, how important and what's it going to take to get the run game closer to the way it was in the first two games versus the third game? Depends on what Stanford does defensively in terms of how they're going to try to deploy their defensive people. Um, you know, we always try to be a balanced attack, but again, how the game expresses itself is <clears throat> we only have control over one side of that. They have control over the other side of that. So we'll see how the course of the game goes. You expect them to implement similar things to Fresno as far as defensively? I, Fresno didn't implement anything new. They played four three quarters coverage, which most teams in college football play. So, so their their coverage was was nothing. What we thought going into the game? No, it was not. There was no revolutionary new defense we saw last Saturday. So. David Shaw said he actually expects to have to adjust to you. He said he looks at what you set up offensively and that he has to, he's the one who has to make the adjustments. I think everybody makes adjustments off of everybody. I mean, you can't always look at the last couple of games and say this is what a team does. Everybody adds new wrinkles for new opponents, and um, that's part of the process. You know, David offensively will do some things differently when he plays us than he did against Vanderbilt last week. You know, and the same thing for Lance on defense. You know, I think there'll be some things that they ran against Vanderbilt that they don't run against us. That's what game planning for every team goes, whether it's high school, college, or the NFL. You know, it's it changes week to week. No one runs the same exact offense last week that they ran this week. No one runs the same exact defense that they ran because you're facing different personnel and different matchups. So. He said yesterday that uh, he considers you two to have very similar coaching styles in the way you prepare for a game. He said he called it uh, similar to a tennis match that with adjustments, kind of tweaks going on in match. Yeah, I, and he's right. I mean, I've always enjoyed competing against David. He's one of my favorite coaches and in football, one of my favorite people. He's just a, a, a quality person, um, and, and he's a hell of a football coach. And I think a lot of it comes, he's got an NFL background like I have an NFL background, so there's a lot of situation work that both of our teams do, and, um, you know, that's the challenge in facing him is that, you know, we know this team will be as prepared as any team that we play all season long just because of how well they're coached, so um, that's going to be a challenge for us. Two years ago, you went up there and beat them. Did you get a sense of what that meant to the guys to win that game? And uh, I mean, 11 games in a row. They had yeah, we don't they ever talk about 11 games in a row because none of these guys were here for the 11 games in a row. So um, they were excited because we won a conference game on the road against a real quality opponent. And that was, we never talked about it during the week. Um, we didn't talk about it after the game. You know, that's just not how we're wired. So. This is your first road game. How do you prepare for the for, uh, Something like this. Uh, we drove around campus like 16 times on a bus <laughs> and then start practice. Like, um, you just you just got to go. It's your first game on the road. You know, we were fortunate to play three home games um, because of how the conference schedule, I mean, kind of our outer conference schedule felt. Um, we'll have some kids travel for the first time, but it is a veteran team. Most of these kids have traveled. Um, most of our kids that are playing are, are were here last year. Um, there's a couple freshmen that I think they're individual position coaches. We'll just talk, just talk to them about the protocols. But we keep the same schedule when we go on the road, so we meet at the same time. Um, you know, we eat at the same time. All those things are different. The only difference is instead of our guys um, doing it here in our meeting rooms right here on campus, we'll be doing it at the, the hotel that we're staying at and then uh, up in Palo Alto. So um, besides that, the schedule will stay the same. So we try not to dis- disrupt them from that standpoint. Um, so I, I, I don't anticipate any issues. So. Have you ever been in a situation like Stanford is in? This is their first home game in 600 days because they played their last four on the road last year and their first three on the road yeah. this year. Have you ever been in that, a situation like that as a no, coach? Nobody has been in this situation. <laughs> you know, no one's not played an entire, had an entire season, but didn't play in front of fans and didn't have the opportunity to play at home. So I think everybody, you know, it's it's a, this whole pandemic is a thing of first for everybody. So, you know, it's just, it's a real interesting thing, and every day you kind of see a new statistic. It's 600 days since this. It's 500 days since that. Um, it's just part of us getting back into the groove of what it is to be a normal college football season. Um, but again, as we talked about the other day with the COVID variant, the Delta variant out there, you still have to be conscious because um, I think I just saw the coach for Western Michigan is out this week because he has COVID. So, um, you know, it's still something we got to be conscious of. But there, I don't think anybody's ever been in this situation where you've been, it's, what did you say, 600 days? 600 days. 
that's a uh, that's interesting. After watching the film, uh, what did you think of Sam Marazzo's performance, and at what point did you guys decide that he was going to get the start? Um, Sam did a nice job. I mean, and Sam's been a starter for us, so it was just. You know, does he get cleared medically? And he did get cleared medically. And then from when the medical rehab is over, then it's the football rehab, you know, because he hadn't played. You know, he missed all spring. Um, he hadn't played since the last fall. So, um, you know, we had great confidence in Sam. And, you know, we got the go ahead. We had kind of targeted. Hopefully, maybe we could get him back for the Fresno game. Um, I think he was probably chomping at the bit during the Hawaii and the LSU games. Um, but we're always going to err on the side of caution here and make sure he was 100% ready to go. And, you know, I thought Sam did a really nice job for us. So we're really pleased to have him back. And, just gives us more depth inside, you know, and, and, uh, you know, with, with John Gaines being able to play center and John did in the first two games, Duke Clement can play center for us. So um, between the three of those guys, we feel a lot stronger about our center position. Can you talk about how <clears throat> the guys on this team weren't here for 11 in a row, losses yeah. to Stanford, but they were here last year pretty much all of them for, for how that game went down against Stanford. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't change your coaching st style because of that, is there a, a sense around the team they kind of want to avenge that? No, we're not in the avenge world. Like We look forward. So, I mean, it, it, again, success isn't a continuum nor is failure. So, you know, to continue to dwell and to talk about things that went on in the past, I think, is just a waste of time. And so that's what we try always to try to impress on our players. Um, and that's just part of the thing. You know, going to think about last year's game is, is really, to me, is just a distraction. Now, we watched the film from last year's game because there's a lot of their guys back, and they didn't change coordinators. You know, David's still running the offense. Lance is still running the defense. So we'll look at the film, and we'll study that, and you see the schematical matchups that happened in that game, just as they've done the same thing for us. So um, that's how we kind of look at it. But we're not – we don't – scratch and claw for motivation to do things and you know this is a revenge game or all those other things I just think that's a waste of energy you know we're, we're again I'll say it again success is not a continuum nor is failure a continuum because if success was a continuum if you won your first game you wouldn't have a game for the rest of the season and if you lost your first game you'd lose every game for the rest of the season so that kind of blows that theory out of the water it's, it's got to be I have to have a great week of training we have to have a great week of training to prepare for a really good football team and that's what we put our emphasis on you guys did the uh, yellow jerseys to honor scout team and the history of UCLA football. Who came with that idea? Um, we did it as a staff and we did it all last year too so you know, it's just a continuum of what we've done. Right, thanks. Thanks. Bye.